It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Africa-themed Christmas yes. on Your View. Woo, woo, woo. We love it. We love it. Hope you have. You have, hope you had a great weekend. How are you doing, Tapwe? Good to have you. Um, grateful to God for life. You look so. different with the wig. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. But well, trying, trying. Um, yeah. Over the weekend, I went for. I was on. I was last on the show on Thursday, and I'd been complaining of serious body pain. I thought you were going to. Leave. I went to check. I went to test actually, and I had malaria. Oh. I'm not pregnant. Um, <laughs> and it's not COVID. That is not COVID. <laughs> You know, and I've gone through my malaria treatment and I feel much better. It was a restful weekend. Um, my oh, husband's yeah, birthday Friday. was on Friday. I took Happy him. Happy birthday, Ogama. <laughs> yeah. It was Happy on Friday. Day. I wow. took him out. We went to get our eye checked, um, went to eat, just went around. It was, I just Friday wanted to make him. Together. Yes. Oh. I told him, anything you have, don't just clear that day for me. Mm -hmm. And when people call him, we say, ah, Oga, my, Madame has taken me over for today. So I to say, Madame has taken me over for today. I'm like, right, this is Friday. Your birthday on a Friday night. Where are we going? I say, Madame has taken me over today. So it was, that was how we spent that was good today. Nice. Nice. How are you doing, yes, man? I'm fine and grateful to God. Ah, it was nothing weekend for me. Oh. Everybody just has one strain. My son running a temperature, the father running, purging. And, oh. uh, and if my husband purges, I remember COVID. <laughs> ah, if you just purges, because. One thing that when his body is not feeling fine, that's one sign that something is wrong. He will just be so weak overnight. But it's better now with grateful to God. God. Um, things are much better. Okay. They're all on treatment. Um, Fantastic. How are you doing, Maria? I'm fine. I love your dress. Thank you so much. I love yours too. You. Love the colors. Yeah. So um, the weekend was a bit, was exciting for um, Aima, especially my daughter. She had her Christmas carol at her club. So there's this club she goes to every Saturday where they teach them to be prim and proper and stuff like that. So they had their um, Christmas party. It was nice, it was good, but I had an observation. They played Nigerian music. And we know how this popular Nigerian, mm. we know the lyrics of these songs. Mm. And so I'm thinking, I want to appeal to our musicians. Can we come <laughs> up with... Children appropriate, appropriate music so that we, our children can enjoy themselves without the parents blushing. And then our children were singing along. Oh, <laughs> you want to like, how, where, where did you hear this from? They know the songs, That's they know well. the words. Maybe they don't understand what they're saying, but yeah. it was really... I was like, please, we need something else yeah. that our children can, yeah. can the DJs, enjoy. Can the DJs be the more DJ had no clue. We had to go and talk to DJ. Ah. Oga DJ, please yeah, be sensitive. No, I, I think this the is... school authorities should let the DJ know. No, 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 school. school. But okay. DJs, mm. DJs now should know when they're well, attending. Yeah. So my, my, my nieces, when uh, AJ turned 10, this happened. Mm. I had to confront the DJ at his party because this is family party and I dance at family mm. parties. And the songs are not just appropriate. Yeah. The yeah. lyrics... Yeah. So when the younger sister to turn 10, we had the same issue again, same DJ. So please, if you don't have mm. like, but it goes back to the kind of music we have, the mm. options are available. Right? We, we, we need to do more. There's, there's, a market for, for, there's a market for clean music. There was a time that comedy was also filled with lyric mm. jokes. Mm. And then some people came out and said, we are clean jokes people. Yeah. And then they define themselves and they perform at churches and all of that. And they are making money. So obviously, some people need to come out as clean music, but okay. it's still fun. Mm. Mariah, how was your Family centric no, no, music. Femi was Yes, at um, the, the nativity, nativity concert. Yeah. Mm. So we have very limited tickets. So he, we only invited like really close family members. Mm. And it was, it was nice. It was a maiden edition. So hopefully my next year, because of COVID, we couldn't have everybody. So hopefully next year will be slightly bigger. You know, and then we can have Because we still everybody. remember last Christmas. Yeah, I'm fine. We, really we have to push so this our, our song properly. <laughs> but um, he, he's, a, he's, he's a real talent. Right? Yes, I think he, he sings really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so much happening. We're still having an African-themed Christmas. Everybody yo, yo, yo. loved our pictures last week. Okay. We're hoping to do something great this week also, but mm -hmm. you have to stay tuned. All right, we're going to go on a quick break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. All right, so because it's an African themed, we're having um, snacks. You know, you yeah. can't have anything in Africa we without have food. Kuli Kuli. They have Kuli Kuli and there's Kokoro and everything. So mm -hmm. just letting them know why we are snacking. Munching. African Christmas has it's to have a bit of, you know. 
<laughs> and well. Africans have breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta eat. <laughs> we have to eat. <laughs> All right, let's start with the punch. We won't reverse travel ban over federal government's threat, says UK. Mm. Wife bolts door as Ogun Pastor alleges rips. Mm. Uh, teenage chorister couple arrested. Ghanaian to Nigerian snapped with 10 kg cocaine. One million tramadol capsules seized. 53 UI lecturer salaries not paid since December 2020. Court dismisses a refined other's objection to Abacha's 1.5 billion property. Court stops trial of ex army chief others over the 13.8 billion fraud. And reps invite Malami at the bio FIRS as controversy emerges over tax holidays. Okay, major okay, headline. Major okay. headline. Okay. So, our Minister for Aviation, Adi Sirika, was responding to the red listing that you know, the UK and some other major countries have done to our country over this Omicron variant of COVID 19. And he said that it's not fair that you know, they put us on red list and we can't travel there without consequence. And then their commercial flights just fly in here and fly out as if it is normal. So he says by Tuesday, Canada, Saudi Arabia, and the UK will be placed also. Their commercial flights will be placed on the ban. And Nigerians started to react. And the UK also reacted, saying that when they, were, they asked the spokesperson for, their, for the British High Commission, he says that that's not anything, that they will not reverse their travel ban and then the high um, commission, her, commissioner herself, um, Katrina Leang, says that their resolve to ban Nigeria was based on evidence. It was evidence-based. According to her, 19 out of 21 passengers with Omicron variant with Nigeria travel history flew directly to Britain from Nigeria. And so they, agreed, they reached that decision to put Nigeria on the red list as well as um, some other countries that they monitor that. So their decision to ban Nigeria was not based on any sentiment. It was scientif scientifically okay. evidence-based. Okay. And so <laughs> our people are reacting that, you know, we should weigh the commercial uh, or economic implications of banning a country like the UK, you know, because we are looking for FDI and all of those things. Okay. <laughs> yes, um, the human interest story of, um, in Ogun State, this pastor uh, by the name Peter Taiwo and his wife, um, Elizabeth Taiwo, have been arrested for allegedly um, raping a 16-year-old chorister. So their pastor and his wife, uh, the wife told this 16-year-old girl to go and meet her husband, mm. and he had uh, an errand to send her on. You know how they do pastor, pastor. So she went there, and he was in his room. When she walked into the room, the wife locked <gasps> the door from, from outside. outside. And the man raped that little girl. And after he was done, the wife opened the door and the husband left. And she said to her, stop crying. Uh, you are now a woman. And please, and, and then warned her not to tell anyone. Mm. Anyways, look, thankfully, this child was able to report them to the police station. They've been arrested. Of course, we know who they blamed. Can we have a guess? The devil. The, the devil. devil. So the devil has been blamed again. And um, here we are. Oh my God, I this is such online. a hard... It's a very terrible yes. story, especially the part of a woman conniving. And, you know, we've always said that these things are supported by... We, yes. we the women, are yes. the ones, you know, it's really, really sad. But let's yes. move on to Asu's story. Mm. Um, Asu, once again, is crying out that so that people don't take their call for strike as insensitive, they are pre-informing Nigerians and all well-meaning Nigerians on why they are going to have to go on strike again said that 53 lecturers of the University of Ibadan haven't been paid since December 2020. I wonder how they've survived so far. Also yeah. mentioned how, why, um, while other, some lecturers from the Eboin State University haven't been paid their salary for months, the state governor has um, gotten permission to establish two more universities, and he hasn't even paid the salary the of, the, ones of the ones working in the existing university, saying that the government is implementing policies haphazardly, like we will have an agreement in a book, you would implement line one and line five, and the remaining parts are not being implemented. Mm -hmm. That the, MO, the MOA signed in 2020 hasn't been fully implemented, and it should be that selective children of issues is not going to be accepted anymore, and that they would have to go on strike again. Yeah, Please, can, can we I just can. resolve? Let's move on now to Daily Sun. Omicron. Federal government bans flights from UK, Canada, Saudi, and others. 
Two monarchs abducted in Imo. Buhari Governor Kalu, Tinumbu Minister, others Mon Shaun of Bomoshan. In security, Boko Haram ISOP may soon have overrun Abuja. Now by ex rep speaker warns. Kaigama insecurity taking away joy from Nigeria. And we get to are you use your experience to rescue Nigeria and rebuild PDP? And the queer has a cause for support from traditional rulers to strengthen security. Okay, which story are we starting with? Okay, uh, the Shaun's. Shaun? Yes, the Shaun of Ogbomosho. Um, <laughs> Oba. Ah, ah, I missed his name. Passed yesterday and he's been buried according to Islamic rights immediately within the palace. And, you know, as expected, everybody that is everybody in Nigeria has something good to say about him. The, his death was announced by on behalf of the ruling family by Bagun ruling house and the... So his name is Obanjimo Oyewumi. Oyewumi. He's been on the throne for 48 yes, yes. years. Wow. Yeah. Last one. This is a correct party. Ascension. Yeah. Ascension, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Serious party, oh. Yes, so. Who wants to be locking down? Going, yeah. So carry us along. All okay, right. so yeah, I want to take Ipeazu's story. So Ipeazu, oh. the governor of... You have go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Of Abia State, while um, appointing mm -hmm. the, during mm -hmm. the coronation, 21-year coronation anniversary of the first deputy chairman of Abia mm -hmm. State Council of Traditional Rulers and conferment of chieftaincy mm -hmm. at the Indio Kogo Palace, <laughs> I'm sure I spelled that name, <laughs> of Abariba Kingdom, or Hafia local government area, he mentioned the importance of the path of the traditional rulers in protecting and preserving peace within the community, says that the monarchs would strengthen security system. The monarchs are closer to the people. They see them every day. They know their people. And if the monarchs will cooperate with the government, there yeah. will be more security. And we've been, for, forever, we've been asking for a constitutional role for these monarchs. So it's important that they have a role to play in this democracy. Because the truth is that we have to customize this democracy to fit yes. our own uh, realities. Localize. And the people actually mm -hmm. are very close to the, to the monarchs in the, within their regions. Mm. Let's take one more story. Yeah, so the one. Archbishop of um, Abuja, um, Catholic Archdiocese, Ignatius Kaigama, um, during his homily, um, he, he, he just... He was just appealing to the federal government and says that the insecurity is gradually taking away our peace and joy and that's just the truth i mean that just sums it up because i'm thinking this is christmas and you can just see that it's a somber it's like a somber mood you know constantly hearing stories of one kidnapping or the other raping all these things anyway he's saying that government needs to do better we need to sit up and um, he says how do you expect nigerians to rejoice in this season in the midst of growing insecurity banditry kidnapping and severe economic yeah. hardship poor social services and many other social vices in a society that exploits the poor, leaving many people hungry and frustrated with lack of oh, opportunities sure. and the hopes for a bright future being hijacked by a greedy and privileged few whose comforts are guaranteed at the expense of other Nigerians. I know the government also likes for us to talk about, you know, they say balance the conversation. So yes, we understand that some good is happening here and there, but really generally that's the atmosphere right mm. now. People's joy have been taken away. Okay, let's so. go on a quick break. Yeah, let's, let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Staying with us, we're still having our African-themed Christmas. So moving on to the second segment of the paper review. I'm going to start with the point. Hard times. Nigerians grown as unregulated payday lenders compound poverty. Man kills wife, declares her missing after dumping body um, inside abandoned car. If young crisis, security operatives now brutalize us. Loot our homes, indigents allege. As Nigeria's trade merchandise expands, deficit hits 8.83 trillion in nine months. 
and 19.3 billion naira bailout saga. Kogi drags EFCC to court, demands 35 billion naira damages. Right. So I have a phone crisis. Um, four communities, four villages within the Eza Ifyong community in Ohaku local government area of Ebony State have started to ask for help, asking the federal government to be to assist them. According to them, they've become uh, constantly attacked by security agencies who are supposed to protect them. They, they've been exposed to that. During a village, an entire village crisis that they had in the past, there was really no looting of their houses. But subsequently, after the security agencies intervened and took over the community, they are now the ones, you know, looting and, you know, attacking them. There's even constant arson happening, people burning people's houses within the community. But the spokesperson for the Ebony State Command, the um, Public Relations Officers for Ebony State Command, DSP Order Loves, she said that no complaint has come to them as the police officially. about what is happening, officially about what is happening in that community. So they don't know anything about this report in the point. That's what she said to the point um, correspondent that interviewed her. Right, I get That's, this a lot of time because mm -hmm. I mean, we hear this. It's, it's part of the bureaucracy in our government. So you're waiting for people to come and, uh, to come and uh, report. For to but you. a lot of Nigerians have issues with reporting. They feel that they'll become victimized. Yes, they, yes. they become seen as the... They'll the, take their number. They can't ask yes, them can to come for information. They, yeah, so, so they're, they're, there's that fear. So yes. if you don't come, you don't go to us. So now that this information is out there, it's important that they it's, go there to investigate. Exactly. So now it's in the papers. But she's saying it's still a rumor as far as the command is concerned. And until they get the official reports, nothing can be done Imagine about that. it. So sad. Yeah. So this, yeah. Yes, in Ochun State, a man, Sanusi Shaib, has been arrested for allegedly killing his wife, Kende mm -hmm. Adibui. Um, on November 13th. First of all, um, neighbors say that this is a very um, do a domestic violent marriage and that one time this man um, stabbed his wife in the buttocks oh and she God. couldn't sit for a whole month and that the family, his in-laws, have constantly rebuked him for his violent ways with his wife. And um, they said on this particular day, he went around telling people that he could not find his wife. And so um, neighbors and friends, you know, a search party was um, put together and they looked for her until they found her in an abandoned vehicle with a wrapper tied around her neck and a knife in her hand. Um, anyways, he's been um, arrested and remanded because it looked like he did yeah. that. Let me take the major headlines. So, hard times. Nigerians grown as unregulated payday lenders compound poverty. So, many of us, I'm sure, I've gotten those messages where they'll say, um, you know, Mary something, something, and she's owing, and she's a lender that has disappeared. That is what this is about. So these are apps that, and this industry is all regulated. You can borrow money just by providing your BVN, providing your name and access and your picture. But you must click to accept that they have access to your contacts, and that's why they are able to send those messages to everybody on, the con on your contacts. They give these loans at outrageous um, interest, rate. interest rates, and it is so easy to get them. So the investigation by The Point pointed out the fact that since the pandemic has gotten worse, people that need daily, as in something to just eat on a daily basis, resort to these apps, apps hoping that they'll be able to pay back. And then when they are not paid back, they are demonized everywhere. Every of their contacts gets a message labeling them as debtors. And the industry keeps thriving because the CBN is not regulating it. So they are not... And they are making a lot of money. So the, in, the, is, the call now is for in-depth investigation of what is going on. How are they making this money? Why are they not registered? And why do they have access to just giving people money the way they are doing it right. so far? I think mm -hmm. that is something that we'll, I'll be waiting to hear what the CBN okay. governor mm -hmm. will say about it. Moving quickly now to the Nigerian Tribune. Let's find a story of not taking. Presidency, that was the finance bills. Presidency highlights 21 key amendments. Police contact Interpol immigration over runway hotel MD. 19.3 um, billion naira bailout saga. Kogi takes EFCC to court. Demands 35 billion naira damages. Nobody can stop Buhari from visiting Ebony says uh, Umahi. My altercation with Obasanjo hours after Bola Ige was assassinated, says Akonde. And serving governor, go, um, government, with, serving governor withdrew 60 billion naira cash. In six years, says EFCC. Okay, which story are we taking? So, Let's go to Kogi State. Update on the Kogi EFCC <laughs> saga. <laughs> so right now, Kogi has finally taken EFCC to court, and they are asking for 35 billion naira in damages. They mm -hmm. said 
um, over what they call unsubstantiated allegations. So they're saying, you called us out, it was not true. Court, tell them to give us 35 billion naira. Um, and also I'd ask the court that any um, further uh, post, either Facebook or their official um, social media or whatever print has to stop. And also that they should, um, EFCC should, you know, make a statement saying that those were not true, they were fraudulent. And, um, you know, give us, yeah. give us some money for it. So just yeah. basically, okay. they're taking um, EFCC to court. court. I, right. I'm really interested to see how this, you know, finally pans out. If we find that EFCC was wrong all along, who did right. now pay 35 billion naira in damages. I to, doubt it. I doubt it. It's not been able to the OAU follow-up story. So the um, IG has ordered the police intelligence response team, headed by our own former... Um, to investigate the to find out <laughs> sorry i forgot the agency so i just moved on okay. to investigate and find out the whereabouts of rahim adedoin the son of the dr raman adedoin who's presently being remanded in police custody pending his trial with the, over the death of the um, timothy adegoke the oau mba student who died in their custody and according to this team the md son is the major suspect yeah. in the death of, Ade, uh, of Adego Ketimothi. He was the managing director of the hotel where the uh, uh, deceased was killed. And according to the witness or uh, another uh, confessions around this mother, he supervised the, the burial of the body after the deceased had passed. So they are looking for him to come and answer. And only him can declare or clear his father's innocence on this matter. Presently now, the father is suffering from something that is not directly linked to so we're mm. hoping that, you know, they find him soon. So the, um, there's a quick news about Nigeria's oil output has been dropping. I think I'm always taking this story so that we might have a more realistic understanding of our revenue. The oil output in Nigeria has dropped year on year by 13%. And right now, since 2017, it's been happening. So for the past five years, it's been dropping every year. Right now, it is 1.3 million barrels per day. Um, that is a 13% drop. So before, and the reason for this, because they had to, we had to check what was yeah, causing what's this, causing is because we Nigerians are carrying out illegal refining system. And for us to illegally refine, it means we are illegally getting crude oil. Bunkery. So many of the bunkery, so many of the um, international oil companies are complaining that they cannot, they, oh. they would do their best to protect, but as long as you are allowing illegal refineries, they will source the crude oil by damaging the crude, and there are multiple effects to this, apart from the fact that we are losing supply, um, cash flow. We are also damaging our environment. Anywhere they puncture the yes, pipe, sir. they would cause leakage, which will cause harm to our environment. So we are losing money as well. It is we, the people of Nigeria, that is causing this. Okay. And yet our budget is reflecting a high, um, subsidy. Su high subsidy, high price expectation, which is not realistic. Because okay, let's move on quickly now to Vanguard. Corporate governance worsens as companies withhold financials. Hmm. Northern governors in trouble for 60 billion naira cash withdrawal. National Theatre Renovation Project meets year-end target, says Samuel Lu. APC will cease to exist in 2022, says IU. And uh, misdeeds, corruption, political recognition, bane of Nigeria's problems. That's Vanguard. Okay, uh, I was going to take the story on the National Theatre. So there was a review... Um, that happened in Lagos State yesterday. The governor of the state, the CBN governor, Mr. Godwin Mefele, and the minister of information and culture, Elijah Lai Mohammed, expressed satisfaction with the level of work that has been done by the National Arts Theatre. According to them, um, 40 billion naira investment have been put into this, and the work so far has been very commendable. And they are hoping that um, once it's created, the, the, the 3,000 square meter roof terrace, which had been a major source of leakages, is also currently undergoing repair while the floors, walls, panels, and ceilings have all been stripped back and they're all being worked on. So we're looking forward to the conclusion or completion of this. Um, to be a 500-seater cinema have been, have, have been renovated and we're going to be a revenue generation for the country, both Lake Baker State and the federal government. Okay, we have to run. I think that's all we can take. Uh, there's a story that interested me, The Guardian, the major headline. Over 77 billion dollar loans, bad governance, kill a Greek bank. And what happened was that I think... Um, the MD of the bank had to present to the National Assembly, and he was being accused, the Bank of Agriculture was being accused of not um, 
properly ensuring that those people he gave loans to could actually pay back. And part of the issue was the anchor borrowers program because mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of them they, um, a lot of them have gotten money. He said about 864 billion have gone into the anchor borrowers to 4.1 million farmers growing in fa over 5 million hectares of land, inclusive of the 91 billion now disbursed by the Bank of uh, Agriculture. Although the Senate, the National Assembly, actually blamed the bank, said that they should have put in proper processes to ensure that those who they are giving these loans to can actually pay back and put proper measures in place to ensure that they're able to get these guys. Mm -hmm. As much as I understand, I agree with them blaming the bank. I also say we the people too. Mm. We are also we are also in this in the, in the, in, the, in this in this um, but era. The system has to do has to be run in such a way that yeah. there are no loopholes that yeah. people yeah. take advantage of. Because I think yeah, thank you very mm. much, Mariam. Because the truth is that everybody there's no um, there's monopoly no of madness. Yes. Mm. We saw that at uh, at the insurrection that happened. Yes. Like, finally, the, the world saw that. Okay, even for the, can. this climb, this this it's Western climb, yes. everybody can go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But it's this system, the system that is these people. policies that put people in place and mm. ensure that there's in, there's no impunity mm -hmm. when these kind of things happen. All right, that is all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we move on to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. for staying with us. So, the federal government's decision to ban flights from several countries have obviously been a major topic in the last 48 hours. Nigerians living abroad are quite concerned about this new development. And the, the reason why there's a lot of concern is some are saying that this decision was based on, was an emotional decision versus the British or the UK government that had said that they were banning flights from Nigeria based on scientific reasons. And they gave us reasons why, saying that out of 21 people that came into the country, 19 of them had Omicron variant of COVID-19. However, when, our, when our, the Minister of Aviation came out, he, he, was, he was talking, especially with the, with the ban from the UAE, he was saying that it was based on the fact that um, we had allowed them to have 21 um, flights into Nigeria meaning three days per week, per, per day, three, three flights per day. And then Airpiece was asking for, I think, three flights. As well. And they, as well, and they refused and only gave us one, even from one, from one region, I think. And so it, was, there, there wasn't, it wasn't based on a lot of principles. And Nigerians are saying, okay, who does this ban benefit, us or them? Or how would Nigerians react to the fact that they wouldn't be able to come back, especially those who have traveled abroad in this, in, in this holiday period? Coming back to Nigeria will then become a problem. So what are your thoughts on this? I'd like to open our phone lines to Nigerians, especially those living abroad. What are your thoughts on this ban? Um, hopefully to continue the conversation at some point, we might bring in officials from the aviation sector and even the economists to explain to us what we'll be losing on both ends. But it'd be nice to hear from Nigerians. You can call us on 081-270-53687, 091-390-76948. You can also send us messages on YouTube and Facebook. We'll be happy to hear your thoughts. So let me start with um, talk about what are your thoughts when you heard about this ban? So the initial, the one for the UAE, I'm, like I've been on the matter, <laughs> um, I was happy that the ban was lifted, Emirates was going to be allowed to land in Nigeria and fly off Nigeria. And then I read different accounts from people within the aviation industry as to how they felt when the, recipro the reciprocity that should have happened with that handshake did not happen. I felt like Nigeria was being taken for granted. Like, okay, yes, by every standard, we are a nation just like you are a nation. We might be mismanaged, maybe having economical challenges, but by no means are we just someone that you will just do whatever you want and there'll be no repercussions. So for the Emirates, for the UAE, for flights that are going towards that region and the reaction of the government, I support because there was a, it was an action reaction thing 
and an action, lack of reaction, leading to another action. So I agree with that. However, for the new one that I've just heard and read in papers this morning, which is that Canada, UK, and okay. Saudi Arabia are now going to also be banned because they put us on red list. Red list. I feel that um, we shouldn't be reactionary. I, I would like a government that is taking, because they gave a reason for why they did what they did. And so we should also give a reason for why we're doing what we did. Okay. Omicron did not generate from Nigeria. We did not, it, it did not mutate no, from no. Nigeria. Someone brought it here. Yeah. So if we can trace our, what they usually call so, that, that uh, can the first person that brought it in. If we were on the watch, we would have found the person that brought it in. But we also failed in our own exactly. path. So we should yeah. sit up and not be attacking. But in, yeah. protecting, in protecting us too, because this is, a, um, this is a season where everybody's yeah. coming home. Yes. In protecting us, don't you think it's a good decision for the government to say, you know what, maybe we should hold up this flight If that was countries. the reason they gave. Yes. And not if we so, have done like that. Okay, so for me, the moment I heard about all the travel ban and the reactions of Nigerians, and, you know, very well-placed Nigerians, really educated, well-exposed Nigerians, people who know a lot more than me, you know, complaining about why the government, why the, these countries would ban us. They didn't think it was right. Uh, many of them just thought it was, you know, it was political. But as a layman sitting here, for me, it just seemed like the best thing for any country to do. Um, I'm in a country, I'm, I'm a leader of a country, and I feel that people coming from certain countries may come, may bring with them a variant of a disease that we, um, of a virus that we are yet to understand. Uh, and I think that this just shows us what we should have done in the beginning. And I remember when we first had this COVID issue, one of the things I used to say was that we should, you know, um, have a ban too from these countries. Let them, let us be sure with the people that we're allowing into our country. But we did not do that. And now we can see how they behave when they feel that their own country is threatened. Okay. It's just the right, for me, personally, and I'm willing to hear from people that know better than I do, for me, just the right thing to do when you're not sure yet until you're working on it, you put people on the red list. You put a ban. You give all conditions that, okay, if you insist on coming, you will come and um, stay so so amount of, of days in isolation. Now, when we do the same, the sad thing is that we're doing it to, spite. to spite them. We're not doing it because scientifically we can prove that this is wrong. We're just doing it to spite them, and then it makes us even look weaker. But I agree that sometimes um, countries like um, countries in Africa are treated because you know they can get away with anything. We always act as if we depend on them for our you know for everything. Oh, if the flights don't come in, how? Um, we already we're hearing that people are going to lose their jobs. It's going to affect jobs in the aviation, um, in the, the aviation sector. So it's a bigger issue about what we need to do going forward. And we have talked about this since COVID started. We've talked about our hospitals. We've talked about our research. We've talked about our doctors going abroad. We've talked about our government and how we need to sit up and become self-sufficient, at least if in Africa, at least, in, 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 Echo, uh, in West Africa, we can't constantly be, you know, uh, the, the development of our country, of our continent, cannot constantly be determined right. by the whims and caprices of the West, of yeah. Canada mm -hmm. and UK but, but, and the US, determining, you well, know. And the truth is that, in, in fairness, we can't become this overnight. Mm. The countries that we admire that, that are this today, over the years, many years, invested over time. So with the, the research we see today, the development we see, the kind of uh, work that we're seeing today that we admire is because of years of investment. So it, it's not something we can get overnight since, since COVID had happened. But my own worry is this ban, if they hadn't banned these countries, would we, same Nigerians, say, ah, ah, why can't we too ban these, them from coming to the country? Are we not the same Nigerians that would be accusing them of inaction? Now they've acted. We are accusing them of, of action, of reacting. Reaction. So are we also not as confused as our government? No, we are not. Nigerians are clear about what they want. It's governments who, who, who play around the truth. So initially when COVID came, we kept wondering when would this ban happen. And Nigerian government went to the books. They went to the economic reasons mm -hmm. of why they cannot ban these countries and how it will affect us, how it will affect other countries and all of those mathematics. They brought all those figures out. They justified that they cannot ban. Since somebody brought it, an Italian brought it in, and we started to have to deal with it. Some of us got infected, and we you know, lost our daily no lives. And people lost their jobs. And we now died. suddenly, people died. 
and we refused to follow up with figures and facts. So the variant started to mutate. We had Delta, Okinikon, then now we have Omicron. And our own government who seem only always seem to talk to us only after these variants have been discovered abroad. We seem to be a country that, you know, we're just waiting. We don't know where this thing comes from. We're just waiting for everything about this thing to be done for us. So COVID came. We did not know how to do anything about it. We didn't ban until they banned the whole country, the whole world before we banned. And then eventually when our people got infected, we started to react by just building, just like every other country do on this one, building health centers to cater for it. And then we stopped. We were waiting for AIDS all the time. And then eventually we started to deal with it. When the variant started to come, we started to say, no, not deadly, it doesn't kill, and all of those things. But these are serious countries who are thinking, we don't want to lose a life before we start to react mm. about whether it kills or I, not I, I here. I have to go on a break, Nima, because I can, I can almost hear Nima. <laughs> if this ban wasn't taken, mm. and these Nigerians did come in from US, UK and for the holidays, and people like the but numbers are I, I can hear Nima saying, why did we not ban? Why did we not stop? No. I can almost hear you. Let's go to break. Ah, we'll right back. Come back. Let, let me continue. I'm not finished. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So while we're trying to get in someone who can tell us what, we're, what, what we may be losing if indeed this uh, ban is sustained, I was, before the break, I was telling him that I can almost hear her accuse the federal government of not banning, especially when there's an influx of Nigerians during the holidays and, and where we put these 200 million Nigerians at risk of this new variant indeed. So if we hadn't banned it, wouldn't we see the same Nigerians who you said are crystal clear on what they want? Complain that the government didn't I mean, act. I that I'm tired about discussions on COVID. The original one, hey, bad, 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 that was then. Now I already know there will be no ban until the old world is banning us. So <laughs> I'm not expecting. I already know what this government, you can, I think you can tell from the artist then what they can do. No, we have not even banned. We are proposing to ban tomorrow, to stop these flights from tomorrow. It's not already official. That's what is in the papers, according to the Minister for Aviation. Tuesday is what he said. So we are still reactionary. We are not always... We, you see, Nigeria used to be a country that had some place in the economic things, scheme of things. Now we always... We, we seem like whatever they give us. So now uh, people are now talking and talking. talking with two sides of your mouth. No, too. that's no, what I'm okay. saying. I'm talking with two sides of your mouth. No, 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 Brian, no. That's what I'm saying. That's, I've been saying the same thing from the beginning. Okay. Nigerian government will not do what they need to do. And it's painful because if you look at what we studied in history mm. of Nigeria, these yeah. countries will not just be banning Nigeria. They didn't ban the U.S. But, you know, there are more infected people with the variant abroad, too. They only counted 19 people. Just that there was Country. consistency in how these people flew directly from here today. And they put us on the red list. So, and it's almost looking like an appetite list. But we don't have the amount to even fight it. We don't have the place or okay. cloud to do Let anything. me take this call. Good morning. Are you there? Good morning. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Okay, my name is Frank. I'm a first time caller here. from uh, Mikoyi. Okay. And uh, my take on it is that um, concerning this ban, yes. we should look inward as a country okay. to first analyze why these countries are banning us. We should look inward because if you look at the BRT buses, they are still using AC. The mm -hmm. social distancing that we're meant to be implementing, we're not implementing it. The test results that all these companies are conducting, some of them are fake. Go to our airports. It's like a madhouse. Mm -hmm. These guys have intelligent people that move around. The British, the Canadians, they have intelligent people moving around. And they have this, they have this, this data. They see our airports. They see how we're conducting ourselves. So they know that, look, it's not about just banning us, apartheid and all that. No, we should look, the federal government should not reciprocate that way. They should look inward, tidy up the house, make sure the airports are well running according to international standards. And, and, and especially when this COVID thing, everybody is sanitizing their airports. Look at our transport system. Today in Obadan I was looking at it. Full AC. No single person wearing social uh, face mask. Look at our eateries before. If you are entering eatery now, they won't tell you to wear your face mask. So these people are living with amongst us. 
and they are seeing the way we are living, they were not observing any COVID protocol. Based on that, this ban is being implemented. So let's look in what are the country, right. tidy up our end, then we Thank can you. fight the battle and tell them, look, we are okay, our test is fantastic. In Ghana. Thank you, AK. Thank you. So yes, Stop see, Femalik says, you can never please Nigerians. You <laughs> ban, they complain. You don't, they will still complain. If a ban is placed on Nigeria, their flights should not come to Nigeria. Who are they coming to pick? So um, I get the, the sentiment of whichever way we are going to complain. I don't think we're compla they complain about the ban. The complain is about the reason for the ban. So every time we're doing something, there should be a reason for what we are doing. There should be something we are doing within our house to also um, prepare us and allow, prevent us from being the receive on the receiving end of they just ban you, they just ban you. But when we watch our government's response, we don't think that there was a lot of thought put to the reaction that we saw in saying we are going to ban you. It was a case of let me threaten them. I'm going to ban you. Maybe if I say I'm going to ban you, then they will now leave. <laughs> but you agree with the UAE it's ban. So but you agree with the UAE. I, I agree so the UAE the, one is different. The UAE but the one UK is different. The UAE, 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 UAE was I mean, protecting like, business. Yes. It was protecting businesses. And I know that a lot of businesses are a lot of business owners are watching who do business in the UAE are feeling bad about this. They are thinking it's just one company against all of them because this affects mainly airpiece. Air but Epis was is a is a national, a, 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 a right? national carrier for Nigeria. It might yeah. is a private owned yeah, business, but, so. but it's a big deal for us that we have a Nigerian company that is traveling. I'm not an ambassador for anybody, but I am happy that a Nigerian company is able to do this, and the person should be allowed to do everything he has capacity yeah. to do and not be cut down in any way. So if Nigeria is re, 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 um, responding to that. So it's a reaction and response thing. The response yeah. was appropriate for UAE. So it's the reaction the... on okay. just banning because they banned us. Let me take that. Diamond. Diamond, are you there? <laughs> I come to America. Yeah, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, this uh, Nigerian government reaction to this, is, to me, is a welcome development because mm. this Omicron variant didn't start from Nigeria. It started from the U uh, Euro. So... Why, uh, why can't they? It, it's an insult to Nigerians. Uh, uh, for example, as, as a Nigerian, it's an insult to me. You know, for UK to even carry such a. When you look at the, I mean, uh, the people that have contacted the virus in UK now, or other European countries, they are more, more, more than Nigeria. So, what to me, what our, our government do to ban this country is a welcome development because they cannot, we, we are not because they were the worst of country that they can be using as a trash and do whatever they like. So that's my take. Good morning. Thank you right. very much, Diamond. I understand this patriotic sentiment, but ah. beyond that, I mean, let's just, just a little, dig a little. Yes, we may not be the country where it is generated from, but the truth is that they can prove data that 19 people traveling from Nigeria traveled with the variant. So whether we like it or not, whether it was discovered here or not, is that there are Nigerians definitely with the um, Omicron variant. Now, what has Nigeria done to find out how many people right now have the variant? Do we have the numbers for those who have it? We don't have those numbers. We don't have the numbers to be able to even say to them that, oh, these people were traveling from another country, and these were their con we did contact tracing for them. And we can tell you that many Nigerians do not have the va variant, yes. but these are the people. You know, we they haven't done that. So if we had done all that, mm. and then we said, and we because have seen, this. and because of that, we are banning you too. Mm, your reaction. Thank you. It will That's... make you feel so proud. Yeah. But when we go about being petty, it just, like, <laughs> just like what Mariah is <laughs> doing right now, you know, we are being petty. <laughs> yeah, it country. just makes us look like mm. we are not a serious right. country. Let me add to right. what you just said. You know, our president just last week decided to check airport workers. For you know, their business making and profits making over this um, COVID pandemic issue. Yeah. We know how Nigerians have fake vaccine cards, yeah. fake um, COVID yeah. whatever test results, and, yeah. and they travel with it. Right. And they only get to those countries. And we've been, people have been shouting for forever. Enforce, you know, that and ensure that the proper thing is done. Whatever you need, need to do to make sure people get a real result, do it. But right. we still have all those bottlenecks, right. and we have okay, our we have own to people making money off We have people. to wrap up on this conversation, but I think the, the message has been very clear. Mm -hmm. So we agree, because the decision to ban um, the UAE 
was based on what a business decision yeah, that against that our own cities, which makes sense, which we are agreeing with as a people. We're saying, mm -hmm. but the other one was reactionary, was emotionally reactionary. Mm -hmm. So we're saying that it has to be factual. That's what we're saying. We don't want yes. it just to be seen. We want us to be taken seriously. And because for us to be taken seriously, let's work with facts, not on sentiments. Yeah. And I think um, we also need to look in, as we're pointing at UK, Mm. Canada and Saudi Arabia, four fingers are pointing right back at us because mm. internally we've not protected to ensure that our Nigerians are getting authentic COVID-19 vaccination cards, that their own vaccination cards are being recognized abroad. So those are things that we need to work on to ensure that we're also protecting ourselves. So I think in a nutshell, we've communicated to the government on our views on this issue. Let's go on a break. When we come back, move on to other topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So, we're still having our African-themed Christmas celebration, and we like those nice African-themed stories. But today, <laughs> we saw a story that uh, the Nobel laureate, Walesho Inka, was saying about religion, saying that um, religion is Nigeria's number one problem. It was during an interview with the uh, professor of African literature, Dr. Louisa Egbunike, and he was saying that Nigeria, that, that we have um, cosseted religion, meaning that we've overindulged, protected, we've overindulged in this concept called religion. And he's saying that um, religion has become the number one problem for Nigerians. Hope is very well, but hope itself can become putrid, which is decay, can become rotten. So um, he's saying that um, hope, if, it is on, if it's for unearned advantages in the society, it can become putrid. If religion becomes an excuse for flouting the law. So he, he gave two examples, which I thought was interesting. He said that, if you, if you recall, a legislator turned governor um, claimed to be, a, was, can claim to be a pedophile and indulge in cross-border child trafficking, celebrating child marriage, consummating that event, which is against the law of the nation, and says he has the right to do it because religion permits. That in itself is part of what he was talking about. Secondly, he gave another example, saying that, if you can use religion to excuse a building church, building a church which collapses on the head of humanity, many of them not from Nigeria, several from South Africa, then you say it was caused by supernatural forces, then also it's part of what we're talking about, religion being our problem. So this was an interesting conversation because we've had a lot of religious discussions on this show. But as the season is here of celebration, it's a time to, it's a moment to reflect mm. on what he's saying. That is there any way, is there, is there any iota of truth in what he's saying? And how can we ensure that we, um, religion is no more what is, is not just the opium of the people, but it can be that source of hope indeed for Nigerians. So let, let, let's have this conversation. What are your thoughts on what he said? Is religion really our problem? Or as Elijah uh, Lai Muhammad said months back, if you recall, back in July, I think, Elijah Lai Muhammad said that religion is not our problem or ethnicity is not our problem. Our real problem is, I can't remember what he said, but I think it's more us, us mm. we the people. So if we fix us, can religion still stand? I mean, that's the conversation. Let's, let's so can, call, let, call us on 081-270-5367-091-390-7694. You can also send messages on YouTube and Facebook. We'll be happy to share your messages. Yes, Nima, go ahead, please. Yeah, so religion has become a tool in the harm hands of evil has also become an excuse for every evil done over the years. So for, for me, because the people who do this and use religion are people, so our problem is us, really. In those days when, they, when we used to revere religious clerics, revere them, it's because they stood for values that were clean, clear and transparent and, and easy to see. So you cannot find a religious person politicizing or ethnicizing truth, they will stick to it and stick to it honestly. And so you will hear comments like, be God-fearing, so that when you're sitting in an office, 
You actually got fairy. But these days now, we've watered religion down so much that somebody will do evil. I'm going to talk about Muslims who will say they'll do evil and they'll do some two rackers of forgiveness, seeking mm. forgiveness at night, at night because God is often forgiving. As if God is just there to play, to be used to play games. Some people will carry out outrageous evil, clear evil that they cannot accept unto themselves. And say, when it is done to somebody else, there's a religious backing for it. Mm. But when it is done to, to, your, to yourself, there's a religious banning for it. As if, uh, we don't even know the right. word religion anymore. It's yeah. too rampant. We will be talking to somebody and the person will be saying, no, when I go on the edge and come back, everything is just fine. Right. Gotcha. You know? Let me come to you. The edge is something that you mm. attain for as a height in your Fear of God. Not a way to wash away to your not sins. a way to wash away your sins and go back to them as if yeah. repentance is something you just go and yeah. you know yeah. do it again and again. So, that's the question. Is is it us, the people, it's or us the, the people? people so, go ahead. I, I I I would follow the line that my pastor said years back that um, culture trumps religion, hmm. and I think that once we understand it, culture trumps religion in every society. Their religion is a merge, is an immersion of their culture as well as the religion. The same Christianity we practice here, you go to the South American countries, they do it in a totally different way. Mm. And they are also Christians, and they are calling on the name of Jesus, calling God, but their culture merged with it. You go to Europe, they merge their culture with it. What we've done in Nigeria is that we've merged our, we've met our culture, and culture is not traditional. We've met our culture is our way of living. Let me define culture well. We've merged culture with religion in a way excusing, re giving religion the bad name. But the religion itself, if you study every religious book, it's clear. This is good, love good, excuse evil. Full stop. We have created a culture of evil and we find excuses in everything to perpetrate our evil. So it is the culture of evil that we need to deal with and not demonizing any religion. Mm -hmm. Because a pastor and his wife over the weekend did something horrible and said it was the devil. Mm. So just say we demonize the devil, we demonize our traditional beliefs, mm. we are demonizing the religion we are currently operating. It is the culture of not taking responsibility. So let me, let me, let me try to rationalize what you're saying. So if we have a, we talked about discrimination last week. Mm. If we have a culture of discrimination, for example, mm -hmm. and then we discriminate against poor people. So um, we think, oh, because you're poor, you cannot, I can, I can, I can take your child to work for me and mm. to sleep with my husband because mm -hmm. you, you, you can't say anything. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I feel that, so sleep with my, sleep with that girl, whatever, and we are, go back home, take 10,000 naira. that's it. Because we have a culture of discrimination, you have no right to talk, I am a madam. So it's that, it's that that we now bring in, even though you're a pastor. Mm -hmm. So we now inf mm -hmm. in, 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 infuse that culture with, with our cult, with religion. our culture. And that's why it's looking, that's why a Walisha guy will say, Religion is our problem. But really, mm. what you're saying is that religion is not the problem. We, the people, are the problem. Yeah. Let me come to you, Mary. Yeah, this reminds me of um, this madman, Gandhi's quote. I heard it a long time as a child. It says, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians mm. are so unlike your Christ. Mm. And we know he was Buddhist, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth, really, about our religion. We read the books. We know what it says. But somehow, we find people um, have different interpretations for it per time per circumstance, mm -hmm. per, per perversions, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. So it is truly the people of Nigeria, now I'm talking about us specifically, that are the problem. We have the culture of materialism, and that mm. is what is sweeping across our country right now. We will do anything for money, we will mm. sell <laughs> anyone for mm. money, we will kill anyone for money. We are kidnapping, we are raping, we are kidnapping children, we are raping mothers. There's no empathy, no conscience anymore. And that is not found in the books of our religion. Our religion preaches peace, it preaches love, kindness. But people are not doing that because for us, what is most important, and this is a blame to all of us, we have put money on a pedestal. So someone who has money, however that person got that money, that person is important. That person is a role model. That person makes sense. We have it so much that when you talk to somebody, 
when you are telling someone the truth, the person looks at you and says, how much do you yeah. have self? And everybody agrees, like, yes, how much well, do you have self that you dare right. to open your mouth mm -hmm. in this conversation? Mm -hmm. So that is what has eaten deeply. And that is why we see this materialism, we see it as corruption in our government, where a government official understands that it's not what I do for the development of mm. my community or for my state. It's how much money I'm able to gather, build a huge mansion right. in my community and have people come and worship me as I give them little crumbs and little crumbs and they go away. So that's what our problem really. Mm. Nigerians, we need to uh, let me, talk let, to Let's ourselves. go on a break. I really like that interesting angle. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we dig further. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. to stay with us. So we are still discussing religion, and especially because the Nobel laureate, Wale Shoyinka, Professor Wale Shoyinka, was saying that religion is our problem. And um, one, other, one other thing that, and he said two other major things that he said, actually, but I'll start with one. He said that religion must be put in its place in order for people to be liberated as rational beings who can tackle the problems of existence in a rational, collective way, rather than by insisting that it's only one route that society can be transformed. So, in this regard, does religion <coughs> hinder or hamper our development where we're not being rational in how we do things? Every legal thing, if you, instead of you to, a child is sick and he has a headache, the right thing is, oh, do you give him paracetamol, check his temperature, or you pray for the person and you activate your faith. Now, of course, miracles happen, the child gets well. But therefore, when you now replicate that same system for another child, the headache doesn't go. So you, one child was healed, the second child wasn't healed. I was saying, give the child medicine, but you keep praying because you know that this one, and actually what, what's wrong with the second child is much more than a headache. <laughs> but because, you, because miracle happened with child A, you insist that no, this same system will have work. So you don't take that child to the hospital. And you now continue to pray until the child passes on. So the people are now, so according to what they here is that religion doesn't allow us to be rational. You now begin to activate your faith in areas that should also use science. I mean, do you hmm. agree or do you think that we can still activate faith regardless of the situation that we find ourselves? No, I think he wasn't talking about us activating faith. Nigerians are prayerful people. Well, godliness is another matter entirely. Hmm. So we pray, we pray everything. And because affirmations work now, and those people that are doing all the psychological cancer, yes, yes. family I, therapies. I hear. So we know I affirmations shall, I work. And we've known our mothers, those days, we have always used a lot of magic, raburu, to pursue any evil. So maybe an impending evil is being projected to happen. We just simply say it's not our portion and it's not going to happen. And, and we get to get maybe just a small bit of the, the, the effect of it. But then the truth is, um, as well, it's saying. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Science is replicable. You can replicate it, use this thing, and you get better. But we're saying that what he's saying is that religion is going to allow you to be rational, mm -hmm. to think, to liberate your society. So we're saying that is, there, is religion therefore hindering this liberation of our people? So the, what I was going to land on is that the, the point of us being faithful people is not the issue here. Uh -huh. The issue here is that the elites have always used religion as a tool again. So rather than have government make policies that, you know, would last and rep be replicated, so we have a pandemic, Nigeria is also researching, and by the end of the day, we too, we have our vaccine. Or we possibly even have the drug. There's nothing stopping us. And we're on that track because we had some institutions that have failed that would have availed us over the years. But because now the same people who are there in office will just simply tell the people who are faithful that your faith would, you know, help mm. you, and then kill every form of research, Kill every form that is supposed to be for research. Divert what you need to divert. Yeah. And the people are left at helpless mm. at the point that, okay, all I have at this point now is faith. faith. So we should, be talking, we should be talking more to even the people that we put in office. If we want to change things, change our ways. Yeah, you know, um, there's, we know that um, Muslims especially believe that, uh, especially when wrong happens, 
and when you're not a Muslim and you hear the way they accept death and sometimes some injustices and say, Haka Allah is so, it's the will of God. A part of you, because you're not part of that religion, you don't get it. Like, how are you not angry? How are you not demanding for justice? How are you not expecting different? And you have just let it to God. And I feel that, yes, that is an important part of, you know, life. To understand that, yes, God is, uh, you know, God has taken care of it. But it has also been taken advantage of by yes. wicked people. So people are getting away with lots of injustice because in the end, you just come to sit down and they'll tell you that is how, if God had not willed it, it would not have happened. But now I'm seeing a cry from the north. There's so much insecurity. There's so much happening there. And people are screaming and crying because, yes, we understand that God has got it. But he has put some people as leaders in these communities and things are not going right. People, those children that have been kidnapped, the insecurity, the banditry, that is not right. Why would God will that? Mm. That's my own question. Why would God will that constantly? Why would God want to see children taking it, snatched away from their parents? Why would God want to see people just burnt mm. in a bus? Mm. People in a bus just, just, just set ablaze just like that. So there is, there is religion. I understand oh. what he's trying to say. Yes, there's religion, but we cannot allow religion to the point that we do not... Push for justice mm -hmm. so that things can get better. Absolutely. We need to look at it differently Thank you, now. Mariam, because, in fact, you've just got a very soft spot. Because that's, that's, that's what the professor was trying to drive at. That religion beclouds our judgment because everything that happens, we see the bandage, just like you said. I'm more alone. I'm, just, I'm more alone. Mm. That's how God is. But the truth is we got to wake up. Mm. You know, and I, and I really like that point. Let me take this call and I'll come to you talk away. Mm. Good morning. Are you there? Umar from Kaduna, I believe. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Yes. You're alive. Go ahead, please. Yes, indeed. Religion has become one of our greatest problems in this country. Not that religion itself is a problem. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the way we practice our own religion in the country that is the problem. Yes, that's what I would like to say. Hello? Yes, we can very quickly hear you. Thank you very much, Umar. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank you. Hey, it's okay. Hello? We, go ahead. So I was going to say that, um, you know, there's some things that have that have happened that are very, very surprising and shocking, that you wonder, are these people educated people? You know, you get someone that is told, your child is breached, do surgery. And they will say, let my pastor come and pray. The child will turn around. And I know someone who's waited for years. The woman and the child died while they were waiting for the pastor to come and lay hands and pray on a case where they've been told is critical, Please do surgery. The husband said he's not going to sign the surgery papers until the pastor comes to pray because they are not allowed to do surgery. Many people have not gotten transfused, have died without blood because religion did not allow them to get, their religious beliefs does not permit transfusion of blood. And they'll say, if God wants to save me, God will save me. If God does not save me, it means I'm meant to die. Those are the interpretations that we give scriptures that makes people wonder, like the way um, Professor is saying that, what is, religion is our problem. Well, religion is not the problem, is that we refuse to understand that God has given you capacity, knowledge, brain, to do some things for yourself. And so we mustn't worship things that we have capacity to do, uh, um, to, to fix and work on. And, I, and when we say that culture, this is the culture, because it's the people that move, that is the Christianity, they go into Islam, they go into any religion, they do the same thing. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, the, it's not the religion that is the problem, it is the people and the culture of the people, the way of life of our people that is giving this religion, this, this different religion, a negative name. And we need to start talking to ourselves that let us open up our minds mm. so that when a pastor, a pastor is not God, if a pastor says you should do something that is not rational, don't do it. That's what we've, we've read some inhuman things that pastors have said they should do and they did it. Pastors flog people in church and they do all sorts of things pastors because we feel spray like... Pastors insecticide in people's mouths. And they died. We see those videos. So let's, let me take this course. Good morning, are you there? Oh, spiritual leader. You're live. Go ahead, please. Oh, what is it? So, you see, I'll, I'll take some messages now, but it's important, when, when we started this conversation, mm. we almost said... Religion is not the problem. It's not our problem. That it's the people. Mm -hmm. We are the people who have problems. But also talk, we also agree that we can infuse, or what we do is infuse our culture. Yeah. We're also saying that this culture is also some of this wicked culture we infuse into religion. Mm. We're also saying that religion has indeed stopped 
a, a whole community of people from speaking mm -hmm. because they believe that it's that how God wants it. Yeah. But we're now saying, if we're going to go with what Professor Wolochika is saying, that listen, we need to be liberated. Yeah. And liberation, therefore, is saying, we call it spade a spade. This child should not have died because mm -hmm. you should have given this child surgery. This mm -hmm. child should have gone under surgery. Yeah. This child, don't say that's how God wants it. This child, this child does not deserve to die. Mm -hmm. let, let me quickly do a clarity on in a line earlier, June, the comment that you said in Hausa. So when something has happened, mm. to deal with grief is to accept it as part of will, not to accept the cause of it. Okay. So, no, no. so that's not a religion. Because the same religion, where that comment is made, says that if people do not change their ways, God will not change their condition. Mm. It's a Quranic verse. So we, we Nigerians cannot continue to say, no, doctors, so or no hospital. Mm. All through my problems with my deep religious knowledge, I went to hospital. Yes. Yeah. I took my doctor's advice. And every time I decided not to take it, I regretted it. So I know better. And a lot of people, we, you don't accept the cause. But the, the final, finality of certain things, you just accept it accept to it. help you deal with grief. Mm. Because if it wasn't going to be, you would have found a solution. Mm. And you should be on the path to seeking a solution. So we cannot say China is making reels. And here we're not funding research in schools. Mm. The countries where all these religions came from, they had research. All the mathematics and everything that I know in history were found in, in, in the Arabia. Why, why then are we accepting religion without accepting the knowledge so or the a... will to, to research and find solutions? Mm. So, yes, again, are we so, saying that that's the interpretation of man now? Yes, now the say, cultural... Because we have that where people have not gotten justice because mm. they have been told... That is, that let is the will be. of God. Let, and it, let be, it be, let it go. And then God will sort of sort it out instead of so, following the system that needs and that need to justice. Yes. That's what I have justice. to go a break. But to get, us to, to get us to solutions, we should be inventing yes, yes. and reinventing ways to Our leaders to, also to bring depend on God. Mm. Our leaders is that our leaders Our leader will say, let us pray. No, that's that's going to be. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. When we come back, we dig further. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still discussing this matter of um, religion being a problem, according to Professor Wally Shoinka. And before the break, I had said that our leaders also depend on God. A lot of times, they ask us to pray. When situations happen, they, say, they tell us to pray and trust God for some kind of a solution. So in this way, even our own leaders to depend on God. Mm -hmm. How, therefore, can we have liberation, if that's what, what uh, Professor Wally Shoinka is asking for, that religion should be put in its place so that we can be liberated. And that's really the conversation we're having. Mm -hmm. Do we need the liberation? And do we need to remove religion so we can have liberation? And that, that's, that's really the, the conversation that we're having. We yes. need to remove excuses so that we can have liberation. As the, the religion mm -hmm. has become mm -hmm. an excuse. Because I, I'm, I'm reading here, when our president wasn't feeling fine, you know, the, our leaders find a way to still pray and fast, and then they go and seek mm -hmm. proper medical treatment. So, when the president wasn't feeling fine, Muslim clerics declared 10 days prayer and fasting for Buhari. That was in was 2017, when he was in the hospital in the abroad. That's it happened. Um, and Calabar groups also planned seven days fasting and prayer. 65 Christians in, um, began fasting and prayer in MFM. In 2017, you know, there was a whole lot because people thought the, presidency was going, the president was going to die. And he didn't but, die. But while we were hospital, praying, this is the wisdom I want us to get. While we were praying for the president, the president was seeking medical, the best national. of medical care in the UK. So what we do here is we pray and go to hospitals that are overcrowded, where, they don't, where they don't have, we don't have access to good medical care, and we're trusting that the prayer alone will solve the problem. Even the president, though he is asking us to pray for him, was seeking medical care. Mm. That is the balance we need to have. So that when we are fighting insecurity, we are saying the president was in Saudi Arabia in October 2021, and he said he prayed, offered fervent prayers for the insecurity challenges in Nigeria. That's not all. Because while you were praying for your own health, you were getting treated. Let's also have the extensive, intensive um, strategy session that we're going to implement. The intelligence are going to use to protect people 
So we're not just spraying on one hand without doing the corresponding work necessary. Mm, okay. It is faith and works. It yeah. one cannot Let me work take alone. this mm. call. Adolphus, well said. Adolphus, are you there? You're live. Yeah, Go ahead, please. Good morning, ladies. Morning. The biggest problem we have in Nigeria today is the church. That's the biggest industry in Nigeria today. The only book that they translated to us is the Bible. Why didn't they translate physics, mathematics, chemistry into Yoruba, Hausa, and the Igbo so that we can break into technology? So look at it that way. That is why we are having problems in Nigeria today. Most of the big churches we have in Nigeria are the ones causing all these things. So every Tuesday or Wednesday, you see millions of people in one church or the other. What are they doing? Instead of them to be in the factory where they are manufacturing and bringing goods to our people so that we can export and import. Do you understand what mm, I'm saying? Thank you. So what, thank you. So what Adolphus is saying is also relevant. He's saying that, listen, these people that we have, this influx of Nigerians in churches, we need them in the manufacturing mm -hmm plants mm. and even the textbooks we read the truth is that uh, we've always said here at this table that in, in China France Germany they learn this technology in their language they mm. understand it in their indigenous language if somebody from uh, Nigeria is being taught engineering with his indigenous language there's a possibility that he'll actually invent but we are, we are teaching him in a foreign language. How would he understand? How can he recreate what he doesn't fully understand? And so it's probably part of this issue we're saying that we are, we, but as you said, religion is an excuse. Mm. And, and, and pastors are another about, excuse. Yeah. When we point fingers and say, pastors are that the they problem. Mean, yeah. They are the biggest industry. We are also oh, excusing, giving, using them as an excuse. Nobody is holding or trapping your brain. Yeah, and then you know how, where you mentioned you put religion in its place. And I think Jesus, was, Jesus said that beautifully when he says, give to Caesar what is Jesus Thank and to you, God what sister. is God. So he paid his tax. He did not say, see, I am Jesus Christ, the son of God. <laughs> the whole of this earth is all me. Me. My father owns this earth and I'm not going to pay tax. He did what, to, and, and he did that to show an example exactly. that you must do. There are systems in place mm -hmm. so that this, your world that you're living in, this earth that you're living in will work. Mm. There has to be, um, we, we cannot constantly keep giving excuses. I don't know if you've ever tried to employ um, any staff and they've told you, I can't come on Wednesdays because I'm um, just, uh, you mm. know, mm. No, apart from service, I'm a worker or mm. something. It's like, but you're supposed to be earning money for your family. Mm. He said, yes, but my pastor has told me that this job, if I cannot come on Wednesday, I, I cannot take the job. And then you find him still on the street looking for a job because, so sometimes I think, I don't know if it's the pastors that tell these people or the people that feel that it's their own way of worshipping God, that they give a day where they're supposed to be working and any money to spend in church. So we need to put these things in the right perspective. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, well, there's always space for miracles. Let me, talk, let me take this couple, Ebenezer. Yeah. Ebenezer from Abuja, are you there? The miracles we are looking yes, for. Yes. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, I would rather prefer to say people are hiding under religion mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Not that religion is the problem. People are hiding under religion. Yeah. In the 60s, in the 70s, we see that we are having this group. There are, are religious in Nigeria that people are practicing. But our culture is the problem. Like we want to believe the same. We bring our attitude, our culture into religion, which I would call ignorance. People are saying uh, people are gathering in the church, gathering in the something they are not manufacturing. Are we practicing religion more than China? China has different religion, I mean that I want their view every every day. Yes. They practice they are practicing different religion. All those people are practicing religion. But our own our attitude, because we are ignorant. So people are hiding, they know that we are ignorant. They know that we don't know anything. So they are hiding under that religion to yeah. perpetuate it. Somebody, th thank you very much, Abinis. Somebody was suggesting that. This is a difficult suggestion. But somebody said that, why don't we make religion so private that you can only worship in your houses? Mm. You can't go to churches. You can't have any buildings. You can't have this mega, uh, biggest church in the world uh, reputation. <laughs> have it in your house. Mm. When you can look, worship oh, God in your there's house there's such mm. that... Mm. We are, you're not, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not become, you don't longer become an excuse. So there's another for thing, another perspective. Yeah. Look at Dubai. You know, that is just um, a subsection of the United Arab Emirates. Yeah. 
they don't they, they do have they don't work on they work on Sundays they don't Sundays work on Monday like yeah yeah Sundays they are Monday they don't work on Fridays they observe prayer time and yet they are advancing extremely fast in every sector they are the fastest growing the women are Muslim women they cover their head but they are heading science and technology women are going are planning how they will go to the moon mm. Muslim women they are religious, but they have not allowed that to stop them from being productive. Mm. So when we want to copy, we don't need to remove religion. Mm. We just need to open up our mind and decide this is what we want to do and change the culture of excuses it's and begin true. to be productive. So the real mm. problem, therefore, talk with Marco Dige, and is excuses, mm. yes. not religion. And then Our just own. to look at the opposite, Afghanistan. Yes. Now that they are stopping women from working or doing anything, mm. and we can see how that's, it, that's culture collapsing. Because the culture there is holding down women. Mm -hmm. It's not understanding that a woman can be a Muslim as well as a, an accomplished person. And so what happens is that the whole of that country... So the problem is not religion. We need to deal so with our culture. Therefore, in our, uh, in our small conversation, <laughs> Professor Wale Shoenka, we, we therefore tell you <laughs> that, Nigeria, that religion is not our problem. So, our real problem is the excuses culture. we make, mm -hmm. the culture the of excuses excuse that we give to each other. Mm. You know, mm. that, 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 that's, that's the real problem, mm. the culture mm. of excuse. And we need to tackle that separately. Hmm. I think, uh, let's take a few comments before we wrap up. I wanted to say that the religions that we have, although mine I know too well, insist and encourage the use of the mind, the use of reasoning. Mm. Several verses in the Quran will say, can you not think? Is mm. the blind equal to the seeing? No. Research, find solutions, solve world problems. And that's how the countries that are around us are doing what they are doing today that we are, we are you know, religious are not doing. Joke Balobu says, Morale is totally off track in this discussion. No matter what language you are taught a skill, you should be able to perform Chinese perf perform Chine as Chinese perform. But Nigerians can't. Why our attitudes and dis is why our attitudes and disposition are hard. Comment is very nice. Okay. Mm. Any more comments? <laughs> we have to wrap yeah, up. We on have this. menu. Um, do not That's forsake it. the gathering of the brethren, Murayo. Okay. This is not a godly suggestion. The scripture states that my people suffer for lack of knowledge. Yeah. Mm. I believe this is a very this is very clear in the scripture. I love yes. that. Yes, um, I love that. Godly gathering can be a family. Yes. yes. Can be a few families come together yes. in your house. So that the Bible says so. Oh, yes. You don't have to Where two or more have gathered. Yes, God is God already there. Yeah, it's not a totally Bible. We have to wrap up. I think I think pretty much we've 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 committed to this conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, we've agreed as that um, real problem is our excuse, our culture of excuse. We point fingers. Even on this table, every small thing, government, every small thing is them. Mm. We hardly ever say we. What am I we doing? the people. What are we doing? That's why the ladies have said this thing of we the people. Let's mm. remind that we are also part of this. And those, it's us that enters government. So we are just as problematic as the government, as the um, um, leaders that we elect. Mm. Okay, that's all we can take on this. But moving on to our... African themed Christmas. Whoop, whoop, yeah. whoop, 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 whoop. So what we had done since last week that every single day we're going to for 12 days of Christmas, starting from last week Thursday, mm -hmm. we're giving out 50,000 naira to uh, our fans. So what mm -hmm. we did, we opened up our, um, our our page and asked people to give us the reasons why they why they need that 50,000 naira and tag TVC Connect. Many have. We trickle down the number to about, I think, about 20 or 25. We now put all the papers together and all the numbers are there. So we're just going to pick randomly somebody and call the person. Hopefully, we have the person's phone number. I'd like to hear the person's voice and um, call them up and tell them they're the winners and send them the 50,000 naira immediately. So um, I'm not even sure if we. Who's send going the... to? So, yeah. Let's speak. Shuffle, shuffle, mm. shuffle, shuffle. shuffle. When we can speak. Yeah. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Let's speak. Uh, and this money came from that no, our money. On the table. Put it on the table. This money okay. came from that money where we told where, where we told our fans to put money together, and we got about eight hundred and eighty thousand naira in total. Yes. So of which we've been giving out fifty thousand naira each, mm -hmm. and we're giving some of our fans. So please, who is the next winner of the fifty thousand naira? And the winner is Adedoku Adiola Gray. Why does he or she deserve? She says, your view, um, it would be a great pleasure if I'm giving this money. I sell recharge cards and I also make hair. This money will be used to expand 
by buying more and selling more recharge card. And as a young lady, I also make wigs to sell, so I have more tools. Oh, I would really appreciate the so offer. Good. God bless you, ladies of your view. Ade Doku, Ade Ola Grace, congratulations. Fantastic. Congratulations. Okay. So we'll be sending the money to her and... Uh, Hopefully one day I would love to really meet all these guys, these 12 yes. people, and have a small, nice celebration. Yeah. It would be nice to have them over. But thank you. That's all we can take on the show today. Um, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.